I'm starting a convention. Okay, you chips. Oh my god. So, <laughs> yeah. if you ask any other convention chair, like, hey, I'm thinking about starting up a convention, what should I do? They just go, don't. <laughs> Kanye actually kicked me in the shit. And it, was, <laughs> it was nice of him. But uh, one of the things that you have to do, and we didn't realize this till late, is at closing ceremonies of any convention, what's one of the things that happens? Next year's theme comes up. So we have this year's theme, and we were sitting down to a meeting, and we had to decide, well, what the hell's next year's theme going to be? And this was at the end of a, what was it, a two-hour meeting? Easily. Oh, and this is in person. We've all traveled. And the only theme we could think of for next year's convention was going to be bad decisions. <laughs> and we didn't stop at bad decisions because these guys all do improv with me, they all do lupus and tabula, so we're all basically psychotic. <laughs> and we formed the whole convention. So a convention that we can never run. <laughs> because, leave it at because, <laughs> the theme was bad decisions, and it would've been awesome. Oh, the bad decisions, guys. That is an inspiring awe. We had a game that we came up with. It's called Blender Chicken. <laughs> I don't has, that, has anyone ever played Blender Chicken? Blender Chicken? Raise your stumps. <laughs> you now know how to play Blender Chicken. There was a room for that. We thought the ranch dressing hose was a great idea at first, but then we realized that it can be used as an anal implement. <laughs> Bad decisions, so that got into a room. It, it, we literally turned a two hour meeting into three and a half hours and we planned an entire bad decision convention from start to finish with every panel. Hey, so <laughs> yeah, but yours is called, look, I forgot the name For of yours. For Fiesta, yeah. We tried oh, to name ours just bad decisions. So for any of those out there who are thinking about starting a con, don't. <laughs> That being said, talking about bad decisions, who want, I'm going to throw it back, who would like to play in our remaining, I think we got 20 minutes, we have 20 minutes left, who would like to play something a little bit more difficult, now if you haven't been up here for an individual game, I'm going to take you first, so please raise your hands if you haven't been up here for a game where you're alone, okay, the game is called Film Noir. Oh. This one is a personal favorite of mine. It's not easy. Okay, you're going to be thinking quickly and you're going to be working with another player. You just came in, so why don't you come up? And I don't think you've been up for an individual game, so why don't you come up? We're doing more than one of these. Uh -oh. I don't want to know. You guys are in front of the table. All right, so film noir is very uh, simple in concept. Who here knows what a film noir is? Her, okay, most of you do. A noir is the most classic one would be the detective. I sat behind my desk wondering where my next paycheck was going to come from when she came in. Eyes as deep as my anus. And it just goes on from there. <laughs> the way this game works is both of you have the power to pause the scene and play God. The two of you will be facing each other for the majority of the scene. When you want to pause the scene, you will simply turn towards the audience and take one step. Here is your line. Once one of you crosses the line, the other one is frozen in time. You may not make any actions or say anything. Because when that person comes forward, they will monologue for a mere 30 seconds, no more, usually less. And whatever they say goes. That is what is happening. If it's mental, if it's physical, however that happens, that person's word is law. Do you understand how we're doing it? I understand that. Do you get it? Yeah. Main thing is, you two are going to be playing off of each other. Remember, don't try to, do, to take the entire scene. It's better if you play with each other than against. Quick, quick question. Yes. We will take turns being God? You, you, and any time you anytime. want to step forward, but if you abuse it, I'm just going to end the game because, you know, I don't believe in it. Right. All right, so, I'm a douchebag. I need where they are. This is film noir. I just need the location. In general. 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 High school. High school. All right. The two of you are in high school. Now I need one occupation. Cheerleader. Janitor. Janitor. What a cheerleader. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter who the fuck takes it. <laughs> I don't care. All right, so to work into the scene, you guys are in a high school, and at some point you need to work in cheerleader. All right, guys, this is not an easy game. Any idle conversation in the room should stop at this point. Guys, best of luck. This is your scene for... Her, your head amplifies. <laughs> Love you. 
That's because it's empty. <laughs> oh! The game is film noir. High school, you have to include a cheerleader. Silence from the audience. And begin. Shh. Oh, these goddamn fucking vacuums, they don't make them like they used to. I don't even know what the... <sighs> um, I, what me. do you want? Do, do you know where the, the, the tryouts for the cheerleading team are? The tryouts for the cheerleading team? Okie dokie, so what you're gonna want to do here, you see that escalator there? Over there, you see that? Pause. Step forward. There you go. I knew where the tryouts for the cheerleading team were. <laughs> <laughs> but all I really wanted to do was make this poor sh schmuck of a janitor feel like the s dirty scum that he was. <laughs> and no one was going to stand in my way of doing that. Some people just need to be put in their place. <laughs> and who better to do that? Who better to do that but me? <laughs> Into the scene. Continue. You see them escalators over there? Oh, yeah, I think I see yeah, them. The ones Those... with the door sign next to them. Uh huh. That are actually stairs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's what you gotta do you gotta walk up the frozen escalators, and then you gotta walk back down the frozen escalators, <laughs> then you gotta sacrifice a chicken to Cthulhu. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Again? I'm pointing right at them. Oh, those ones. Bubble head. Oh, those are the stairs. <laughs> oh, the stairs. No, they're Go actually the escalators, but some fur jumped on too hard. Oh. <laughs> what? What you got? Oh, okay. Make And suddenly, the escalators are covered in fish. <laughs> <laughs> See? Continue. And then, after you sacrifice the chicken to Cthulhu. You put on some rollerblades. Some rollerblades? And then you gotta rollerblade up the fish. <laughs> Where do I find the rollerblades? That's a good question. Pause. Yeah. Forward. I knew where to find the rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> they were in my backpack the whole time. <laughs> I, in fact, swiped them from the gym. But. Yeah, so, <laughs> but don't think for a second I was about to rollerblade up that escalator with all those fish on them. We all really know they weren't fish. They were just the used <laughs> unmentionables from the rest of the cheerleader tryouts. Oh. Continue the scene, back in. React to the scene, continue. Oh my god. <laughs> scene! <laughs> Scene. Your scene is visiting fur at the hospital while he sucks off the microphone. <laughs> Comfortable? Okay. All right, I need dead silence in the room. Guys, film noir, don't forget, and anytime, step forward, pause the scene, you're playing guy. And begin! <coughs> Such a, such a great, beautiful mind. At that time, I realized he was just a piece of shit. <laughs> I was hoping that possibly he wrote me in a will so I could actually 
fucking own a fursuit. <laughs> was, I, I know he, he, he was one of my best friends. I think I thought the world of him. Oh. Pause. I didn't really think the world of him. <laughs> but I had a plan. A plan to cut the will and take all the money for myself. But I had to get rid of this loser first. <laughs> my goal was to do it in the most creative way possible. I mean, I only have fifty dollars in my wallet. There's no way I can pay these medical fees. Look, look. I can handle this. Let's just go through his corpse, and we'll see if we can find some money to make all these medical fees worse. It was at that time I realized the fuck's wrong with this guy. He's not dead. Yet. <laughs> But I figured, hey, I do need the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't mean to get. I've never touched a dead body before. I can handle this. I can handle everything. <laughs> get in there. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> As I felt him, I had a feeling that he might not be dead, but it wasn't. <laughs> Let's just take it and divide his money among us, and we'll just get out of here and leave. It was at that time that the 45 in my pocket felt really tempting. <laughs> As I figured, hey, I don't really care about either of these guys. I could use that damn money. <laughs> but not just you. <laughs> okay, I guess we can do that. Here's the wallet. Okay, take the wallet. I'm going to take my bone tie up, and I'm going to cut him open and make sure. Hey, excuse me, I'm the doctor. <laughs> What are you doing? Do doctor, do doctor. Pause. Take a fork in, thank you. <laughs> Pause. As the doctor entered the room, I smelled a strange odor filling the room. It was at that time I realized I just shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone smell excrement? <laughs> I'm done. I oh, got hold on. I'm checking. Snap. <laughs> yep. He's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no. And if anyone would realize there's only one man that would shove a gloved hand up another man's ass, the doctor was fur. <laughs> and the corpse was alkaline. <laughs> Why would you do that, sir? He's, he's still alive. That must be very painful. <laughs> hey, stay in character. It's just a fist. <laughs> You fuckers made fun of him, it's my turn. <laughs> oh my god, this body isn't what I thought it was. I thought, it's, this body's alkaline. I found a 45 somehow. <laughs> it was at that moment that I realized the insane doctor had stolen my gun and I said, shit, now I gotta pay back the rental and I'm even lower on money. <laughs> this gun smells like poop. <laughs> I was scared, but I wasn't worried, for I had a bulletproof face on. Ha-ha! My face is made of iron! <laughs> I just came in here for a sore throat! <laughs> At that point in time, through the excitement and the blood rushing through my veins, I realized, holy shit, his face is bulletproof! <laughs> Bang! See! <laughs>